Otani going? Absolutely freaking nowhere. Anaheim till the day he dies. Jack McMullen, Peter Raffle, Arm Layton, Just Baseball Show for Friday, July 28th. There have been some trades that have gone down. The Angels said they're keeping Otani. They became buyers immediately. Um, you have Thor going for a former top prospect in one of the more intriguing deals uh, in recent baseball history, which will be fun. And we'll, we'll dive into the magnitude uh, of that one. Also, Dylan Floro for Jorge Lopez. Peter, your thoughts? We've got a lot to get to. I've got a very funny college football parallel off the top, though, that has to do with some of our friends in this industry. But Peter, as always, we are brought to you by BetMGM. By the King of Sportsbooks, BetMGM. Sign up and deposit into your newly created account using promo code Just Baseball. Download the BetMGM Sports app on iOS or Android, or visit betmgm.com. Place your first bet offer and receive up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if it loses, and if the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once the wager is settled. Remember, gambling problem? Call or text one eight hundred Gambler. Must be twenty one or older. I guess we'll do a little college football before we get straight into baseball because it's starting to merge, right? I think this is the last week before we have football and baseball on the calendar. Uh, this is the last. Oh, because the Hall of Fame game? I don't count the Hall of Fame game. Are you going to bet on the Hall of Fame game? Of course not. I'm just saying technically <laughs> I'm not wrong. Technically there's football. Yeah. Arm, are you going to watch the Hall of Fame game? No. No. Yeah, I'm not no. going to watch it, but there's you... football. Arm, do you watch preseason NBA basketball? Um, no, not really. No. Yeah. Okay. Good to note. Now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> um, Lance Lynn is hopping. He's a recurring guest with our friends at foul territory. Yeah. Um, Lance Lynn is hopping on foul territory. Like as we record right now on Thursday afternoon. And I thought that was so funny because, you know, I, obviously like performance aside and Lance has the worst ERA in baseball among <laughs> qualified starters. He just turned it a, a brutal start, but ERA aside, um, this guy is like the hottest name in the trade market right now. He was already floated to Tampa and the Dodgers and he's going on a show. He might just get traded while he's on a show. And I remember Bobby Petrino, the head coach of Louisville football, Petrino got fired after he lost at Syracuse in like 2018 and his pre-recorded coaches show weekly was airing when he got fired. So the coaches show was on local TV in Louisville. He got fired and obviously they didn't dump out of the coaches show. They just put a, a little scroll on the bottom of the screen saying Louisville head coach Bobby Petrino has been fired while he's talking about the team and how they're going to bounce back next week. So I thought that was pretty good. Lance Lynn is so funny because first of all, you got to have some stones to go on a show like that. Not just because you potentially could get traded in the next 20 minutes, but also your performance, I guess, against your crosstown rival in the Chicago Cubs. So Lynn is funny because you could see that he's garnering a lot of interest on the trade market because I think people are still looking at a 27% K rate. They're looking at, you know, expected numbers and ERA estimators that are in the fours that the home run to fly ball stuff. Is that going to continue? Maybe we can buy him super low. The issue is those numbers aren't really kicking in right now. So we heard that the Rays and Lance Lynn before the start, or not the Rays and Chicago White Sox about Lance Lynn, after that start, do you think Eric Neander calls Rick Hahn Arum? And it's like, I think the price just went down, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah one of those X stats kicking in. Before yeah. I get to that, though, like, Literally the first, I, I, like one of the first things I saw when I woke up was foul territory mentioning that Lance Lynn would be on there. And the first thought I had was like, God, that guy rocks. Like, yeah. He actually <laughs> rocks. So like, 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 that's someone who just doesn't take themselves too seriously. Like, yes, I promise you he's trying his best out there. Like, it's not that he doesn't care, but like, he, he just also understands like, I'm not performing. I'm not performing. Doesn't mean I'm not going to live my life. I'm gonna, still going to go on the show and talk to my friends. And, no, and let, I just, let's... I love that about him. Let's accuse a major league baseball pitcher that has signed several very lucrative deals. Let's accuse him of not trying when he pitches. <laughs> Should we do that? <laughs> like, obviously he's fucking trying. That's the thing. It's like, you can't shit on him for a lack of effort. And, and you're right. That screams consummate pro more than anything. He's like, yep, you know, wake up, you know, same shit, different day tomorrow. 
I almost think Lance Lynn tries too hard sometimes, right? When guys are smacking his fastball over the zone, he's like, I ain't going away from it. I'm just going to try and throw this harder. So I would almost say he's trying too hard. Maybe he should try less. Ooh, try less harder. I think that was a Dino Babers line going back to college football as well. Shohei Otani, not going anywhere. Aram, round of applause for you. You saw this coming. You're kind of Nostradamus. How do you feel about Otani not going anywhere? And we're going to get to the Giolito deal here in a moment. I, I'm, I'm, I love it. I, you know, I, just, I know it's one of those things where it's like, oh, they could have got this, they could have got that. But I think it's clear. Like, one, I don't even know if he was really on the market. I have a theory that it, that writers just kind of ran with that because it's the the stories that went with it. I mean, think about just how many clicks and listens and all of that. You know, Otani, where is he going? Kind of gets and what that does for baseball. I don't know if he ever really was that available. But anyways, like, I, I, they had to do it. They had to do it. They had to see it through. Let's let's see if they can keep rolling. It's one thing to keep Otani, and I wanted them to buy. We'll get to the trade, but yeah, like that. This is interesting now because they did get better, but now they're pretty much out of of assets. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. Peter, so, what do you think? Yeah, Tom Verducci broke the story um, on Sports Illustrated that Shohei Otani will not be traded, and. I was listening to the podcast yesterday and everything that Arm said made sense. And it especially makes more sense that the angels aren't out of it, right? They're three and a half games back. I don't think they've been to the playoffs since 2014. There's all these jokes now that, you know, trout can't make it to the playoffs. Go ahead, Jack. I think you had something. Was it 2014? I think it might've been earlier. I think it might've been earlier, but decade. It might be a decade, but that that's the point here, right? That the Angels are as close as they have ever as they have been. So imagine selling it to your fans. Imagine selling it to, to Los Angeles Angels fans that we are the closest we have ever been. Trout, according to Tom Verducci, is making better progress than a lot of the doctors said. So he could be back earlier. The Angels are starting to get back pieces. We saw Zach Neto come back but then of course I think he's injured again I don't know if he quite came back but I know he's close they have a lot of different pieces that are coming in and I think what Tom Verducci was saying was the Angels were looking for big league pieces and prospects and every contender that was trying to trade for Otani was only offering minor league players so at that point if you're trading Otani for only minor league players you're basically saying the season is over And the season isn't over, especially because they've been winning so much in this amount of time since Otani trade rumors have been going on. That's why the Padres are interesting, because they were one of the teams that checked in on Giolito, but then they lost 2-3 to the Pirates. So I feel like teams can become sellers based on this stretch of games in the last 10 to 14 days to kind of see where they're at. Yeah, I mean, it's all about, I guess, fighting to the tape. And there are there are several markers there. The All-Star break is an internal, almost tape at the finish line. Like, hey, we want to be X amount of games back by the break. That That's how teams that aren't in first place view it. Or, hey, we want an X amount of game cushion by the break. That's the internal one. The external one, and I think the one that is so clearly seen, is the deadline. Hey, we need to be X amount of games within the wild card by the deadline in order to kind of like ID where our future goes. Does it go to right now? Does it go to 24 or does it go to 25, 26, 27? And and I think, I don't know, the Padres, like, I don't think the Padres know what they're doing right now. That's a conversation, I guess, for another time. Um, We could do it right now if you want, but I think the Angels know it's 23. They ID'd that. If they had gone three and seven over their last 10, Otani might be out the door, but they haven't. That's the magic of this week stretch. I think that was my point because they played really well, right arm. Like that was, they played so well. They are now three and a half games back of the wild card. That was probably a point where they were saying, fuck it. We're in this. Are you kidding? A hundred percent. And again, like I I thought they could have made some moves that really put them over the top or, you know, I mean, they obviously got better by getting Giolito and we'll break that down in a second. But I want to kind of just talk about what the best case scenario now looks like for, for the, the, angels here because Otani's not even pitching to the best of his ability and he's an ace you know we know that he's an ace and that's a guy that gets the ball game one Reed Detmers has looked really good overall this year and now Giolito is probably your three in the playoffs if you if you get there 
like, could this team, if everything clicks, Brandon Drury's back, Mike Trout's healthy, obviously you have Otani, can this team actually make a run? You want to go first? Jack? <laughs> I, it's more, like, you go. <laughs> uh, no. I really like Reed Detmers. I, I like Patrick Sandoval. Um, I have a love hate experience watching Lucas Giolito over the last five years or so. I don't think that rotation's a World Series caliber rotation. Um, Otani's a World Series caliber starting pitcher, but I, I I just think you have a scheduled disadvantage. We love that term this year, scheduled disadvantage. I, I think they have one when they get to the ALCS or the ALDS games two through four. And I also think that question will be easier once this deadline is over on August 1st, because we just saw them add Lucas Giolito. Again, we keep saying that we're going to talk about it. We will talk about it. We'll get deeper into that. Like trade. literally right now, like in yeah. moments. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. They added Giolito and they add Reynaldo Lopez. So they know that in their bullpen right now, it's basically Matt Moore and Carlos Estevez and not much else. They need to continue to add bullpen arms. But the offense, even in Trout's absence and Brandon Drury's absence and Anthony Rendon's absence, has still been a top 10 offense by WRC Plus since those guys went out. So they're still hitting. And the rotation, I think, adding Giolito, do I love Giolito? No. But does it make their rotation objectively better? Like them versus the Mariners, it's not like the Mariners are playing that great at baseball. The issue is, and why I don't even think they still make the playoffs is there's just too many damn good teams right now in the American league. There's really three wild card spots. I don't think they're catching the second place finisher in the West, whether that be the Astros or the Rangers who are duking it out themselves for two of the best teams in all of baseball. Then you have Wait. the blue Jays. Somebody's going to take it from the AL East. Like whoever doesn't win the AL East is going to occupy they're going to have two of them, right? It's either going to be Orioles, Rays, or Blue Jays. So I respect the decision not trading Otani. I respect that they're buying it because it's a team that hasn't made it in a very long time. They see a window, might as well get after it. I ultimately don't think it's going to work. And I think it's going to put the Angels in a position that's really tough to climb out of moving forward. You know, something Aura mentioned yesterday is that if they held on to him, they give themselves a, a 5 to 10% greater chance of landing Otani in free agency. And I think that's really pertinent right now. Like, I'm thinking about the dumb and dumber meme where it's like, so you're saying there's a chance. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. There was no chance if they moved him. There's a chance here. And, and Aura made a perfect point yesterday. It's like a rallying cry by keeping Otani. It's like, we're not, you know, we're not going anywhere. Like, we're hanging out. Yeah. You know, and Gio. that's, that's kind of where I'm at too, is if if they fight to the bitter end here, they play some decent ball and say they come up just short. I don't know if that means Otani stays, but it helps. It, it can't hurt. And ultimately this is a once in a generation player. You're going to try to do everything you can to keep him. I think it's very clear that the angels want to keep him long-term. And I think they figured they had to give it their best shot. So I'm glad they did that on that side of it. I think it's a good move on the other side. I feel like they just made an addition just to make an addition. <laughs> and I, I don't know if this was the way to do it. I, Edgar Caro, I, I've probably mentioned him like eight times on this podcast is a guy who I thought was going to be one of the best trade chips available at the deadline. And uh, here he is now traded, you know, and, and that was early in the year when I thought they'd always be buyers. And then as they started to look worse and worse, I started to float him less. Cause I'm like, Oh, no way they move him now. They go back to being buyers. They trade Giolito, or they get Giolito and Reynaldo Lopez for Edgar Caro and Kai Bush. Bush is a fine lefty, you know, decent shot to be like a four or five, but could be a reliever, whatever. But they put that on top of a top 100 prospect who is 20 years old in double A, putting up league average numbers, which I think is why people are like, eh. But he's in that Southern League, which was experimental for the first half, was 19 at season start, and is a switch hitting catcher who put up nuclear numbers last year. That's a guy that a lot of teams would have had interest in. They could have probably got Eduardo Rodriguez if they moved Edgar Caro. I just feel like they could have got better pitchers or a player with some control if they added more. Like I don't know. I was just surprised that 
you cash in your best trade chip for Lucas Giolito and a reliever. And also the reliever Lopez doesn't even have control. Yeah. He's a rental as well. I looked yeah. at, I was like, Oh, uh, I guess Lopez has to have a couple of years of control. No, no. no, he's a rental too. two rentals and not even that good of rentals. I, that was the surprising part to me. I mean, they're better. I'm here for it, but like not the best use. I, I think I, I'm trying to like, think about what the conversations between Rick Hahn and Perry Manassian could have sounded like. And I'm honestly thinking Rick Hahn says we need Caro and Kai Bush for these two. And Perry says, you're crazy. And Hahn says, okay, hang up with me. Call the other guys you want. Call the other GMs. Call, call Carter Hawkins. Call Jed Hoyer in Chicago. See if Marcus Stroman's available. Because I know you would do that for Stroman in a, in a rental. Call Detroit. See see if it see if that's going to work out. And he got no's. Like if the Cubs were bad, and it was Stroman and a rental reliever for Carroll and Bush, we're talking about this in a different light. I think yeah. because Stroman has just been better, like flat out. Stroman was an All Star. Gilito was not. Just trust um, him too. Yeah, you trust it. So I don't know. I I bet Rick Hahn almost like strong armed him. It was like see. You're not going to get anybody. Yeah. Let's give you Giolito. The thing is, though, I, I agree with you. I think that's actually it's very probable what happened. Do you think the Angels might have also panicked? Yes. Right? This would this just felt like a panic move. Like, I feel like if they attached one more good prospect, they could have gotten Cease instead of Giolito. Like, that's how big the package felt to me. I yeah, mean, they, I know the Angel system isn't very good, right? But they two have of their best else. prospects. Yeah, they have and nobody Caro, else. I just hear Arum raving about Carroll all year, and I know he's blocked, right, by Logan O'Hoppy. So he is a guy that the Angels could afford to move. But in this deal, in this deal, guys, I mean, is this not a massive overpay? Oh, it's an overpay for yeah. sure. For sure. That's the funnier part is like that they even had to put Kai Bush on top. Like Kai Bush is, I I don't care about like moving Kai Bush, but it's just funny that they had to put somebody else on top. I I just realistically, like, I I think Jack brings up a good point where it's maybe the Tigers are kind of waiting it out and they want to, they want to let things kind of, you know, just, just, just leverage some, I think different conversations, try to drive up the price, let teams bid and, the Angels don't have time for that. Giolito's starting Friday. He, he's he's starting before the deadline. Like he's he's going to start this week. So I I think for them they had that urgency, like Jack said, and I don't think they wanted to wait around anymore because they, they they need him tomorrow. I bet Lopez pitches like tomorrow. Wait, how, hold on. How much better is Lucas Giolito than Michael Lorenzen? And I know Michael Lorenzen, as we're speaking right now, is not Honestly. doing so hot against the Angels, but I assume he would be cheaper. We're talking about Lucas Giolito. You know, he, he went to high school in California, so that means he's going to be a Cy Young for the yeah. Angels. Yes, the Lorenzen, Lorenzen is also a former Angel. I'm sure he'd be comfortable going back, too. I would have called Scott Harris up and asked for Lorenzen instead. Maybe then Lorenzen gets traded. He's not even facing you anymore. That's what I would have looked at over a Giolito. And then I would have gotten a Jason Foley. Like, yeah, I would have gotten one of their yeah. great bullpen arms instead. But I mean, hey, White yeah. Sox, Rick Hahn, how about hey. a good move? Good move. I'm telling. I bet he strong armed Perry. He was like, "Yeah, call around. Let's see what happens." And yep. I, I thought that was. I'm not. I'm not going to say masterclass because last year's loan deadline move was Reese McGuire for Jake Diekman. So I I can't like laud his deadline abilities. Um, that was good. Shout out the White Sox. Shout out the South Side. We're bagging on the Angels for doing it. How about just shout out the White Sox? Yeah, and they still have plans to contend in 24. I think that has been the idea yeah. that has been conveyed. And will They're I buy back in? Yeah, will I buy back contend. in? Absolutely. Are they going to put yeah. out the Fresh Prince thing with like the empty living room and it's like us waiting for for who else is going to compete in the division? I hope they do that again next year because I'll be I'll be drinking the Kool Aid. But uh, I. This was a good move. Like, is it the start of a rebuild? I don't think so. We talked about this, I think, early this week, maybe last week. The White Sox are going to sell all the pieces that are not going to get them a return good enough to kickstart a rebuild. Maybe I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I might have to tell this L on that one. Do I mean, you think I, the, Do you think that the 
price for Giolito was really high, and a lot of teams were like, are we underrating Giolito? Is that no, why I we think, think the, it's a massive overpay? Real quick, and then Arm, you go. I think the price for warm bodies is high at the deadline. This is officially a seller's market. Yeah. Okay. But still, like, I, I guess just the price for a, a decent righty specifically, too. I mean, you got Jaymont. It, it, like you're gonna pivot to Flaherty? No thanks. Like, I'd way rather have Giolito than Flaherty at this. Also point. Also an LA guy though. Oh yeah, LA also guy. an LA guy. Also an LA guy. Three seven nine ERA. Underlying numbers are not great. Four four six x ERA. Four four six FIP, which is kind of on par with what he did last year. Like, it's weird. But with with Caro now, you know, we were talking about like how they wouldn't be able to get enough pieces here to to really make a difference. I mean, Carroll might be their catcher in the next year and and change. You know, he, he could probably start next year in double and then quickly get a bump up to triple. And as he continues to work on the defense, like that could end up being their future behind the dish. They don't have anybody back there. So, I mean, that helps them. And I mean, they don't have a lot of arms. So Bush is just another arm to add into the fold. It, it definitely helps. They're going to move some other dudes. They could kind of turn the system around a little bit if, if it's this much of a seller's market even without parting with Cease. I think this was a great start for them. See how they finish. So, so I take it you're not a Sebi Zavala guy? <laughs> not quite. You see him gotcha. blow it against the Cubs? Zavala? Yeah. No. Uh, I was at I, – I was doing a birthday thing. We were at Trivia at a bar on Wednesday night, and Cubs-White Sox, the open of the broadcast, comes on. And I was, like, I was like, can we change the channel? Like, I don't want to watch this. It's like, your team. So, but I remember I mentioned the Padres a little bit earlier on in this episode. They were among the teams, according to a report in The Athletic, that was in on Giolito. Dude. I know. I had the same reaction. I'm just dude and just shaking my head. I think, so they have three games coming up against the Rangers. I think if they get molly whopped, which I assume will Still happen. They will sell. And I think if they sweep, they're going to buy. Like, I think Preller is just, he's like, we got to see how we do against the Rangers. And okay. if they go two and one or one and two, uh, Preller is going to be a little, little bit of a box. That's what I was going to say. I, like, two and one, let's see what happens. Yeah. One and two. I, st- I think one and two, two and one, and three and oh in that series mean the same thing. <laughs> Preller, unless they yeah. get swept. <laughs> I hope they get swept. I AJ Preller, I feel like just lives in a fantasy land. I I, I just feel like he's. he's I think he there. lives in a state of anxiety and chaos. So we're we're totally different areas. No, here. I think I think everything around him is anxiety and chaos, and he doesn't even notice. Like he's also, just thinking, also, I do think that you guys have to be careful because we had these same conversations where you guys were bagging on Dave Dombrowski and you were like, he's such a crap GM that the Phillies went on to make the world series. So That's Padres fine. fans listening to this, the exact same thing happened, even I though the Phillies that. were like better, but you might go to the world series. Now I'm going to, I'm going to wear that L so hard. If the Padres are in the world series, <laughs> yeah, That's, are you going to do another, you could punch me in the face bet where absolutely you, oh yeah side for you punches like, that's embedded is going to throw a pass in the nfl and like i'm gonna have to hit you that's fine can't wait <laughs> okay <laughs> can't wait all right um it, we're gonna talk about the other la team in a moment but first uh peter show off the shirt please for the youtube crowd the toledo mud hens shout out the scott harris led toledo mud hens and do you know the manager for them i do not um know. It it's got to be some. Mc... It's got to be a classic, like former big league, like a good immaculate grid name. I bet. Yeah. So it was Lloyd McClendon last year, which is a great immaculate grid name. You think it's Jim Leland? It's not Jim Leland. <laughs> I promise you that. Mike Hessman so is sick. their hitting coach, though. Mike Hessman, the all-time leader in home runs in the minor leagues. I think he's got five hundred minor league pumps. That's a cool That's... like TikTok. Mike Hessman. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Just a cool story. Sure. Yeah. Um. But that's courtesy of our friends at Homage. Use the promo code Just Baseball Twenty. Here's the deal with that: Just Baseball Twenty going to get you twenty percent off your entire order at Homage with no minimum spend required. You get a shirt, you get twenty percent off. You get ten shirts, you get twenty percent off. It will not stack with other site wide promos. It's available to new customers only. Limit one use per customer. It's been active the entire month of July. It is active through August seventh. Homage, I cannot speak highly enough about their hoodies. Their shirts are awesome. Their shirts are soft. Arm and I talked about the softness of their shirts, but like their hoodies, dude, 
it's like if a Snuggie was socially acceptable. It feels beautiful. I love these because so I have a Keith Comstock one. The uh, it was uh, back in 1989 where he took a picture uh, for his minor league baseball card and he super glued a ball to his nuts. Yep. and pretended he was getting a comebacker. Yep. Electric shirt arm. Electric shirt. So I have sick. one of those. Like they have. They have shirts where it's like the normal, you know, if you just want to support your team and get a really comfortable, good looking shirt, like it fits well. But then they also have all these incredible designs, like throwbacks to the seventies, right? They have like retro stuff. They have current stuff. They have everything that you could imagine. Might as well just go on there and look. And then if you want to check something out, use code just baseball 20, get 20% off. No brainer. I got a bunch of free stuff. I'm going to buy more. These are sick. These are sick. Yeah, they're, they're, they are super comfortable. I got that, <clears throat> the Pudge and Miggy shirt that I love uh, with the old Marlins teal. Uh, but yeah, they, they've got it all. They've got it all. I'm I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm going to actually browse a little bit more later today. It's Good. just honestly, even if you don't buy anything, I just like looking. It's fun them. to browse. Yeah, I would say at the very browse. least, just browse. It's yeah. pretty fun. <laughs> You check out the other sports too, like the NBA Jam shirts are very good. Those, like, so cool. That. They have NFL really stuff cool. too. It's awesome. Yeah. So homage again, use promo code just baseball 20. That link is in our episode description. Aram, I'm Ed Rosario from the Guardians to the Dodgers for Noah Syndergaard. Your thoughts? Oh, man. Uh, I, there was a there was a few things I, I wanted to unpack from that. One, it's that Noah Syndergaard is going to be there for uh, – in the next week because they'll probably trade Savali and and that even if they don't trade Savali, Noah Syndergaard's their five. Talk about an auto fade, Peter, for your picks. Um, the other thing that's nuts is I just can't believe like I know Ahmed Rosario has been horrible this year. I know he's been terrible on defense. I know he can't hit. I know he's been brutal. I just can't believe that that's where his value is at. It nuts. It's a cash neutral swap. So I think the Dodgers, you know, kicked in whatever money to even it out, six million dollars, I think, so that they're both a wash. But Noah Syndergaard, like that, that's just talk about a warm body. Like that, that's like not even a warm body. That's like a, that's like a cold body that is going to eat some innings, but I'd almost rather just claim some random player and throw him in there. Literally. I guess that I guess the guardians couldn't even get a lottery ticket from the Dodgers for a med Rosario. Like that's what my conclusion is. Like this is the same team that has made a lot of those between the margins moves. They've been on the good end and the bad end. One, they got fleeced for junior Caminero in a no name, you know, lottery ticket flyer for Tobias Myers. But you'd think like if that happened to you and you've also done it the other way to other people that you'd want to at least try to get a, a DSL lottery ticket. But no, they just get Noah Syndergaard. So for me, I think that they couldn't even get a lottery ticket for Ahmed Rosario. Like, I think that's where the value is at now. With that said, though, we're bagging on Noah Syndergaard. Check Guardians Twitter. They are very happy to get rid of Ahmed Rosario. And it makes sense because among shortstops, he has been one of the worst hitters, which is fine if you can play good defense at a premium position. Nope. Negative 16 outs above average for Ahmed Rosario. He has arguably been baseball's worst defensive shortstop on top of it. But you know what's funny? Ahmed Rosario is among the league leaders in hits with runners in scoring position. So at least he's driving in runs when there's ducks on the pond. But when there's no pressure at all, he is an auto out. So it's not like the Dodgers. Like, I kind of understand why the Dodgers were not willing to give up basically anything. But at the same time, the Guardians, like, you sold as low as humanly possible. And I know they have Brian Rocchio potentially coming up. But Noah Syndergaard was the best you could get? Right. Yeah. So I guess. this was a clearing space trade. Brian Rocchio, 16 games in the month of July. He's slashing 379, 468, 545. He was fully ready. He's got 25 hits in 16 games with Columbus. Rocchio got a four game sample a little bit earlier this year. Like he's the better option at shortstop. But yeah, like that was just a head scratcher to me, especially the Guardians who really know what they're doing on the pitching front. Maybe they see something. And I mean, if no there's shot. any, I know we always say that the Dodgers the did like the, there okay, must so, be something somebody sees. I don't see it. Do I don't see it. The year. There was an article on just baseball. I love Cam Rico. There was an article on just baseball.com making a what under ERA case yeah, for Noah yes. Syndergaard. 
Yeah, because you well, it's also a contrarian angle. Like you know, nobody's taking that under, but he's making but the like case. Everybody that he took was it. because he was on the Dodgers. Everybody yeah, our guy like, Cam, oh, Dodgers gonna fix him. Our guy Cam is laying in a puddle of his own urine. There's no doubt about it. Like they turned the water off at his house, and now he just has to drink his own urine. There's no doubt about that. But there just has to be something there because then it it makes no sense. There has to be someone at the Guardians front office who's like. If we could get him to throw 87 instead of 85, I don't know. I don't have the answers. I don't I have would, the answers. I would tell you to close your eyes and see if you can find something there, but that would be counterintuitive. Like, open your eyes, look as hard as you can, and tell me what you see that the Guardians might have seen. Aram, do you have any idea what the Guardians could have possibly seen? I can tell you what the Dodgers saw. <laughs> Three oh last forty games for Ahmed Rosario, three oh three, three forty one, four twenty four. Just don't play him at shortstop. Like if they play him a little bit of second base, if you know, whatever. If they move him around, if he spot starts at short, that's fine. But he's like a decent bat, especially if he's like bench, platoon, whatever it is. Like, dude's hitting fine over the last one twelve WRC plus over his last forty games. Like, this is a usable bat. Noah Syndergaard like might not get out of the second inning of like every single start as a Cleveland Guardian. So I, I don't know what they saw. It's not like they can flip him again later either. He's a free agent. It, there's nothing. You give him a qualifying offer. He's, he's taking it and running to the oh, bank. So like, it's not like shit. you're getting a, yeah, like, there's <laughs> nothing you can do. Like it, it just, it's just literally a placeholder. That's all it was. Rosario at second, Kike Hernandez at short. Oh, and Michael <laughs> Bush to Detroit for Eduardo Rodriguez. Yeah. This is Dodger baseball. Well, isn't Gavin Lux? I think he's trying to come back by the end of the season. And then you have Chris Taylor. You got Miguel Vargas. They have bodies. Do Miguel, Miguel Rojas. Miguel Rojas. Yeah. Why are they? Why, that was another one. Rogue. Yeah. That was another. I, I could have told you the second they made that damn. I told you the second they made that trade that it made no sense. Miguel Rojas was cooked. I, I, I have no idea why they thought Miguel Rojas would help them. Now it's a Med Rosario. Like, it's really interesting to see the Dodgers making these kinds of moves. I'm I'm waiting for like the big shoe to drop, but like maybe it won't. Jack, are the are the 2023 Dodgers similar to the Mets? My column, <laughs> my column on the New York Post. Um, do you think that Andrew Friedman called Rick Hahn and said, "We'll give you Noah Syndergaard for Tim Anderson"? What would you have said? How many? Okay, if I gave you ten words, how many would have been f bombs? If you were sitting in Rick Hahn's chair, it would just be f no, f no, click. So two, it's two, and you have six words to play with there. I don't need them. I would say like fucking fuck no. <laughs> like, Why yeah, did the Guardians no. do this? They didn't even get prospects. Or um, you. Um, I forget what you said under my tweet. Um, because I said this has to be a troll, and you were like, I think you said we're assuming they're gonna get prospects back too. And I said, I hope there are no prospects just for, for content. content purposes, yeah. because this makes no sense. I mean, it's yeah. a clear Dodgers win because yeah, there's way I, more upside. What's the upside with Syndergaard? He's not the not. worst pitcher on earth, he's not no. DFAable. Yeah, no, the, the upside is he has a five. It, for you and eat some innings down the stretch because they need bodies. That's is DFA that's is DFAable a word? It's a word. It can be now. Can't be now. DFAable. Perfect. We know what I mean. Um, Arm, how do you feel about Trent Thornton for Mason McCoy? Oh. <laughs> no thoughts. <laughs> that was Passin's like return to the trade deadline. That kind of sucked. It, like <laughs> I got the tweet notification and I love Passin. I love getting those tweet notifications. As soon as I get something, I assume big news. Trent Thornton was DFA'd. He was traded to Seattle, optioned to Tacoma. Mason McCoy is a minor league infielder. Aram and I talked about the Jorge Lopez for Dylan Floro deal on yesterday's show. We like kind of got to it live. Peter, before we move on to games of the weekend, like, did you have any takeaways from that? It was a reliever swap. Yeah, I would way rather have Jorge Lopez. I thought Kim Nang, Kim Nang did a great job. And I was talking with Colby because it came across on the ticker right when we were in the middle of our not gambling advice betting stream that we do Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And Colby pulled up the stats. He was like, I don't know, man. Dylan Floro has been pitching extremely well. And ever since Jorge Lopez came back from the IL, he's been a little bit shaky. And I'm like, I don't give a 
fuck? <laughs> like, respectfully. Jorge Lopez, I'm seeing him go in on right-handers with 97-mile-an-hour sinkers. We can't forget that he was an elite reliever with the Orioles who was traded for that big package. The Twins obviously regret it because they gave up Yenier Cano, but what can you do? He just had a research. And Kate Povich, right? And Kate Povich. Povich. So that was a big deal. Like, just because Floro is pitching better right now, I've seen plenty of Dylan Floro. Yeah, that's what Colby was saying. He was reading me the numbers the last 14 days, whatever. What I was saying is, and maybe you can read the numbers and, and we can make fun of Colby live on this podcast. But what I'm saying is I would way rather have Jorge Lopez. It is not even close. Like, not even Jorge Lopez I consider one of the better setup men in the American League. Dylan Not Floro, I think, is a fine sixth inning guy, sixth, seventh inning guy. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's like a change of scenery swap. Like, Lopez, the thing with Lopez is he's like really struggled this year. I mean, he's only yeah. striking out seven per, not even seven per nine, like crazy amount of home runs he's given up. And he obviously has battled some, some anxiety issues, is why he hit the IL. So hopefully, change of scenery helps. Hopefully, Mel Stoudemire can work some magic with him and, and, and get him right. But Floro was brutal, man. Like, that was a guy that, like, Marlins fans did not even want to see come in a game in the sixth. Like, uh, he's always going to be a guy that has, like, pretty good peripherals because he doesn't walk dudes. He gets ground balls, all that good stuff. But he's been giving up plenty of earned runs lately. Like, he's had two good outings, and then he gave up three earned runs the other day. He gave up a couple other earned runs the last two outings before that. Like, he's not very good. It's change of scenery for change of scenery. I think the Twins just felt like it wasn't going to happen with Lopez there. The Marlins need any high leverage capable arm that they can find. And and Lopez, you know, has been a guy that can close games out in the past. I think it's a good swap for both sides. And also Lopez has another year of control after this one. Floro is a free agent after this year. So I thought that side of it was interesting too. If Lopez is pretty good, even if he's serviceable, they have him for another year. Floro is going to hit free agency. This was also the per- this was the poster boy trade of reliever volatility, where yeah. if we saw this last year, we'd be so thrown. If we oh, saw this yeah. in May, I'm like still so thrown. thrown. I'm like still relatively thrown. I know that Lopez hasn't done well this year, and I think what the Twins were thinking is Floro's maybe a little bit safer. Like he's not going to be horrible. He's not going to be great. He's just going to be kind of meh. And Lopez has been hurting us a lot. Like maybe a change of scenery is good for him, but I think the Marlins are buying into upside. And the upside is one of the better setup men in baseball. Dylan Floro's upside is nowhere near that. No matter how many ground balls he gets with, you know, it's not like the Marlins defense is helping about either, but you know what I'm saying here? I would much rather have Jorge Lopez still. And I know he's been worse this year and I'm still thrown. Yeah. You're saying his upside is a seventh inning guy for the Miami Marlins or now the Minnesota twins. And the downside would be the seventh inning guy for the St. Paul saints. Are you talking about Floro? No, yeah, I think Floro. Floro's upside is fine setup man. And I think his downside is are we sure we want to put him in the fifth game in the fifth inning up five? Are we sure? Yeah. Yeah. I and with Lopez, I think it's the same downside. But arguably I think the upside is a good closer. I still think he's great. I still think he's got it in him. And I yeah. think it changes scenery would do him really well. But the twins didn't get anyone bad. And I get it, Lopez just isn't working in Minnesota. But I just keep going in circles here. I would way rather have Lopez. Yeah. yeah. Um, Aram, when Julio Rios gets traded to the Yankees this weekend, what's the return? <laughs> I dude, I, I don't even know what the deal is with that guy right now. I, I'm so fascinated to see what he gets in free agency and, and fascinated. Just, it, it's a really weird case. I, I put out a poll last night. Who gets more money in free agency? Julio Rios or Cody Bellinger? Bellinger, easy. Okay, so Bellinger has 56% of the vote oh, right now. No the way. thing is, though, like, how is it easily, like, a guy like Bellinger can have a good half season and Arias can have a bad half season and we just forget everything else? Arias is an arm with a lot of injury history who has just fallen off a cliff this year. I, Bellinger's been an MVP. <laughs> like, he's he's playing back to his form again. Like I just, I would rather shell out the money for the center fielder uh, personally. I, it'll be interesting. I just think it's, it's more likely that Urias gets like the show me deal, like the Rodon type deal. Like you're going to commit five, six, seven years to Urias. Are I, you going to, are you going to commit five to Bellinger? Would you do it? I would. I absolutely would. Absolutely That's would. terrifying. You had a good Even point if- though. Have you talked about what you think the Cubs should do with Bellinger on the pod yet? Yes. 
We yes. talked about it yesterday. Keep him. Keep him. Keep Bellinger, keep Stroman, just go for it. Were there any other trades? Uh, no. Do you want to talk about Mason McCoy for Trent Thornton? Not particularly. Okay. Games of the weekend? <laughs> Games of the weekend. Let's do it. Um, Lucas Giolito, the listed starter for the White Sox against the Guardians at 7-10 tonight. What happens there? Do you, do we think Giolito starts for the White Sox? <laughs> MLB. Which, on Friday. Giolito is listed as the starter for the Chicago White Sox. Oh. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Um, yeah, he's going to start for the LA Angels here. You've got Giolito, actually. If you go to the MLB app, and they'll change this uh, by the time you're listening to this, but Giolito is starting for the White Sox and starting for the LA Angels in Toronto, which is really exciting. <laughs> kind of logic. Um, real one, 7.05 on Friday. Garrett Cole and the Yankees in Baltimore against Grayson Rodriguez. G-Rod is back from being optioned. He's been pumping 99, but again – Fastball command has eluded him at points. Is this a Yankee W? This is also Aaron Judge's valiant return to the lineup. Yeah, but we aren't even totally sure he is coming back. There have been reports that Aaron Boone is still unsure whether he'll see Aaron Judge back on Friday or even this weekend. Um, I think the Yankees do win that one. I think that's the one they win, right? I don't think they get swept in Baltimore, but. If you're going to win one, it, it, it's going to be behind Garrett Cole. So I'll, I'll take them to win that one, but I'm not confident in it. But they got to win one. I think they might get swept. <laughs> got you. Arm. I think the I think the Yankees turn it up if if Judge plays. If Judge plays, I think they're going to start rolling a little bit here. Um, I got I got Yanks. Fun night tonight. Angels Blue Jays in Toronto. Lucas Giolito Angels debut against Kevin Gosman. Ooh. Uh, Blue Jays are at home or on the road? At home in Toronto. The problem is the Blue Jays refused to give Kevin Gosman run support. And I don't know if you guys noticed Gosman's velocity down two to yeah. three miles an hour in his last start did not look great. Um, I think Giolito pitches well. I'm going to go with the Angels on that one. I like the Angels there. Yeah. Angels are never losing again. Yep. I don't, I don't, I don't think they'll ever lose again. I, I got the Angels winning. Is this a lock? No. Arum? What? You just said they're never losing again. Is it a lock? That they're never going to lose again? No, that Giolito wins. Um, Jack just uh, found out about gambling lingo, and now yeah, he's trying is to... It, is it a lock? Is it, is um, it caked? Yeah. G- Giolito, I think Giolito turns into gem. I think okay. I think they win. Mackenzie Gore against Max Scherzer in New York. Mets, mm. Nats. <sighs> I think Scherzer looked... Uh, kind of looked like... Cr- he looked good, then horrible. Gore, you know, the Mets can't hit lefties. I think that's going to be pretty low scoring. I would go with the Mets, but not very confident. And I think that's like a three to two game. Yeah. I mean, the Nats, CJ Abrams has been going nuts lately. Uh, nuts. Not, they take that one Mackenzie Gore quality start. The ghost of Juan Soto gets the win over the Mets. I love it. Uh, 8 10 in Houston. Shane McClanahan and the Rays against Christian Javier and the Astros. In Houston, Tampa hasn't been playing well. Sneaky high scoring game, but the Astros are smelling blood. Okay. Jordan's back. Altuve's back. Bregman's getting his. I think the Astros really going to run here. The Rays are falling. Yeah. And they got a rebound, and this is a big series for them to do it. I don't see it happening. Give me the Astros. I think this is their kind of like fight or flight series, and I think they wake up. They're just too good. Uh, I think they rise to the occasion. Javier, though, this is also a big gut check. Mm-hmm. Yep. When are you going to turn it around? If you're going to turn it around this year, when is it going to happen? I don't know if it's going to happen. So I, I I got the raise in this one. I think they ambush Javier, and McClanahan holds it down at least well enough. Late slate, San Diego, 940 tonight. Joe Musgrove gets the ball for the Padres against Dane Dunning and the Rangers. 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 I might take them every game that series. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even care the pitchers. I mean, the Padres is going to figure out a way to blow it. Yeah. No, 100%. I think they get a bit early lead, too. Yeah. And, and then get just, just absolutely blow it. It could be 8 1 in the ninth and it's not over. No. No. <laughs> Here's one 10 15 tonight. Logan Webb and the Giants against Cutter Crawford and the Red Sox. Red Sox have this weird devil magic going on. They're playing in good San Francisco baseball against Logan Webb. It's going to be a good game. Um, Webb's got a little bit of his issues on the road. 
But when the Red Sox are hot, they just stay hot. But when they're cold, looks like one of the worst teams I've ever watched. But the Red Sox give them credit. They're playing good baseball. They're in fourth place. They're, you know, uh, a tick above the Yankees. And they're beating up on the Braves, right? That's Brian right. Bayo, Spencer a statement Strider. Series. Yeah. Statement series from statement the Red series. Sox. Um, I think they win that game. I think Kirk Crawford's been pitching pretty well. I think they win that game. I, I think they win it too. I, it's it's at Fenway, you said, right? Uh, no, San Francisco. Oh. Giants win. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, Logan Webb at home. Yeah, yeah. no, I was I was worried yeah. about Logan Webb at Fenway. Okay, yeah, I'll go Giants on that one. Logan Webb at home. Cutter Crawford's but, not Cutter Crawford's not matching Logan Webb. Yeah, if this was in Fenway though. I'd be nervous. No, I yeah, think that the take it to Fenway. Like, I think it's a 4-3 win for whoever's at home. <laughs> Got you. Okay. 4-3, Logan Webb, the winner. Yep. Saturday afternoon, 307 in Toronto. Reed Detmers and the Angels against Alec Manoa. Angels, Angels might win this they're, series. They're not, yeah. They're not losing again. Okay. Blue Jays got a weird home run problem against lefties. Lowest in Major League Baseball against left-handed pitching and home runs. You wouldn't expect that from a lineup led by George Springer and Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., all right-handed bats. Least amount of home runs against lefties this entire season. Very weird. All right. How many runs? Cubs, Cardinals in St. Louis. Jamison, Tyone, Adam Wainwright, 715 on Saturday. My two Five. least favorite starting pitchers in all of baseball. I think it's a 15 to 14 game. <laughs> I think they both carve. <laughs> <laughs> I think Two they won both Cardinals. I think they both turn in a six innings or five to six innings, two runs, two strikeouts, four or two walks, and like six line outs. I'm gonna take the under in that game. Bro, well, it's gonna smoke? be 15 and a half, so you're gonna get a good value there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, you totally sound like underground indie band kind of guy. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just being yeah. edgy. You ever heard of Roy Donk? A little contrarian. <laughs> I like it, Arm. Nobody's going to be on that under except Arm Layton. He might come exactly. out a winner. I'm going to watch the shit out of this game. 7-15 in Houston. Taj Bradley in the Rays against Hunter Brown in the Astros. Ooh. Astros I again. I can't wait to watch that one. Bradley's got issues, man. Yeah, yeah, he does. I've got I've got Houston. Yeah, I got Houston too. I mean, I give them the starting pitching advantage. I give them the bullpen advantage. And I give them the offense advantage. Right now, just, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean okay. the difference in the Rays or the McClennan and Astros one versus Javier, you give the Rays the starting pitching advantage. Now on that one, the Astros got every advantage in that game, which means the Rays will win. So I'm picking the Rays. Astros sweep, uh, I think, across us here. Uh, so okay. when Peter was actually taking the Astros, yeah, I got Astros too. Yeah. Um, Seattle, did they get a win in Arizona on Saturday? Brian Wu against Brandon Fott. Fought through well his last time out. Yeah, good but luck. he was Give so bad before that. The ERA is still at 8-8 if you look at it. <laughs> good luck. I'm taking the – ah, uh, Brian Wu's got a problem against lefties. Dimebacks got some. Expect Corbin Carroll to have a big day. But the Mariners still outlast them. Give me the Mariners. In Arizona? Okay. In Arizona. Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Diamondbacks Diamondbacks pull it out. Yeah, Woo Wu gets beat by some home runs in this one. Ball carries a little bit. Okay. Uh 910 on Saturday. How many runs do the Reds put on Emmett Sheehan? Ooh. Four and five Luke innings. Weaver. It's oh, Luke that. Weaver against Emmett Sheehan. <laughs> Four and five innings. Yeah, good luck. Over is it, where is it? Is it in Great America? LA. Oh, uh, LA. I LA is very home friendly over. though. People don't really acknowledge that LA is a very homer friendly ballpark. And not at night. Or the not uh the the fog. It's not the exactly fog, layer. it's the marine the layer. Gets thick. No, it's hard. San Diego too. But that's at night though, not during yeah. the day. Yeah. Um no, but I mean you guys wouldn't have traded Emmett Sheehan for Otani and Trout. So maybe he does end up pitching really well, right, Arm? Yeah, I think this is a Sheehan statement start. Uh, <laughs> to try to get get himself going here back at home. Weaver stinks. I can't believe he's still starting games for them. I don't even know if he starts this game. Maybe they trade for like a starter by then. But no, well, the Reds win every game he pitches. He gives up seven earned, but they win every they game. Win. They think up until that Giants game where they lost eleven ten. I was on Reds money line. Thanks a lot, Reds, where they scored ten and still lost. 
they were nine and one in his starts with like a seven seven eight ERA. So it didn't that's matter. Insane. So he's actually he's a he's a glue that's, guy. That's not sustaining. Give me the Dodgers. Are you sure? I'm that positive. might sustain. I'm positive. Well, it's just a kick in the ass because they're like, we know our pitchers. Give yeah, up five. we know we got to put up <laughs> ten today. We got to be aggressive, and it works for the Reds. Man, okay, rapid fire Sunday. Ready? How many strikeouts does Lazardo have at home against the Tigers on Sunday at 140? Arm. 12. 12. Peter. I'm going to go six. Tigers can hit lefties a little bit. They're not a huge strikeout team. Oh. I mean, six is still good. He's still going to have a good day. I'm going to split the on. difference. Nine. <laughs> okay. I think it's a little bit lower. Okay. Um, Luis Castillo against Merrill Kelly in Arizona. Mariners, Diamondbacks. Give me the D backs. Kelly looked great in his return. Um, Castillo's got an issue. Can't get out lefties either right now. Doesn't look the same. Uh, I'm going to go with the D backs there. You know, his changeup usage is way down, Luis Castillo. Yeah. And that's the pitch to get out lefties on. Like lefty power bats have been eating him. We saw what he looked like against, I mean, the Twins still pitched pretty well, but he just, he hasn't been dominant. Right, he hasn't thrown that like seven inning shutout with ten Ks in a while. Just keeps being like these six inning, three run type form. I'm like, that's not Luis Castillo, and I think it keeps going up um, against the D backs. I'm a Merrill Arm. Kelly truther. I'm a Merrill Kelly truther. D backs. You, you think he's just going to grit and grind his way to the win? Oh yeah, yeah. What like six hits, seven innings, but like one run? Exactly. Okay. One walk, four Ks. Yes or no to end the pod. San Diego, Texas, 410 on Sunday. Does Blake Snell start this game? Yes or no? For no. that's uh, yes. No. I they're they're gonna come down. They're gonna realize how stupid they are. That he's traded. They I may not decide. So. I think yes. I don't think they're gonna realize they're how stupid. So dumb if they it's, don't do that. It's four p.m. Eastern, right on August first. That's the yes. deadline. What exactly time is it? Uh, I think it's five. Four or five. They may decide whether they want to trade Blake Snell at two p.m. Eastern after lunch. Yeah, I could see it. I think they're gonna go all the way down to the wire. I think if Blake Snell is traded, it's one of those ones that happens at like 4.02 p.m. that was just slid on the desk. They're the dumbest team on earth if they don't trade Blake Snell. And that'll be the last words here for the Just Baseball Show for this week. That's Jack, that's Arm, and I'm Peter. The best way to support the Just Baseball Show is to get yourself some Just Baseball merch. Or you can head over to our friends at Homage and get yourself some different kind of merch, maybe a Toledo Mudhead shirt, or maybe all the other shirts that they have by using promo code Just Baseball Twenty. Of course, support BetMGM by using promo code Just Baseball. Download it. All those great bonus bets. And if you are enjoying the podcast, five stars, whether it be on podcasts or or whether it be on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. If you could leave a written review, we'd greatly appreciate. It. And then on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, the like button, and comment. If we said anything crazy or if you like anything for the three of us, we will see you back on Monday to recap all of the trades over the weekend. And with that, thank you, everybody.